السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ردوان الله فاملي I'm your host Hussein Mahmoud welcoming you to the Ridwan Allah show where we help you completely maximize your business finances and life in this dunya and in the akhirah for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, and inshallah uh, in today's episode I wanted to talk about uh, Ramadan and its top seven tips to take advantage of it ta'ala. so I want to give you seven tips uh, for you to take uh, as much of or full advantage of the month of Ramadan as possible ta'ala. so stick with us throughout this whole episode so you guys can get uh, that uh, amazing information ta'ala. Um, and these are the top seven tips that came to the top of my mind uh, ta'ala. So um, I'll go through each one of those steps and try to explain it as much as possible. Um, and, you know, hopefully this is something that will be of benefit to me and you uh, and everyone else. Uh, but before we dive into the topic, um, I really wanted, you know, since it was the you know, since we're in the month of Ramadan uh, in 1442 slash 2021, uh, I really just wanted to, you know, um, you know, provide some value that will help you take advantage of the month of Ramadan, uh, you know, being relevant uh, with the content that we create, uh, not only beneficial for ourselves, but hopefully uh, for you as the viewer as well. So with that being said, uh, quickly touching on the sponsors, announcements and updates. Uh, pri our primary sponsor is Radwanullah.com. Uh, you know, check us out for more detail there. Um, announcements and updates, you know, I've been really just trying to refocus on the Radwanullah show as a, you know, primarily a pre-recorded uh, interview slash conversation or solo episodes like this. Um, so that's one thing that, um, you know, I've kind of announced it last week if you guys haven't caught it yet. Um, other than that, I did record an episode that the audio was really, really bad. Um, this is pretty decent audio, so hopefully... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, just trying to grind through some of the uh, failures and setbacks and things like that. Um, you know, as of right now, uh, I'm refocusing on uh, coaching. So um, if you would like, you know, one on one or team coaching, um, you know, this uh, hit me up and we'll try to set up uh, an agreement where we could help you uh, level up your business finances and life. Uh, not only in this dunya, but more importantly in the akhirah, bi'idhanillahi ta'ala, for the pleasure of Allah. Um, aside from that, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, trying to figure it out and get it together. Um, you know, I'm in the architecting uh, reality of my dreams as of right now. So um, I'm really trying to figure out what I really want in my business, my finances, and life. Um, and, uh, you know... Uh, really, really putting in the hard work, uh, uh, trying to make it happen as well. ta'ala. So there's a lot of busy, busyness, busyness, busyness. <laughs> my my fob accent right there. Um, but but there's a lot of you know just being busy with so many different things and not being as productive as I would like to be, even though I'm reasonably productive. Um, but there's a lot of room for growth in terms of my productivity. Um, and, you know, hopefully uh, as we continue to move on, uh, I'll be refocusing on being more productive than not be the Nilai Ta'ala. Um, aside from that, um, you know, I'm putting uh, the Radwanullah programs on pause as of right now. Um, so, you know, whether it was the business, financial or life uh, maximization uh, programs. Um, as of right now, I'm putting that on pause until further notice. Be the ta'ala. So that those are all of you know. Aside from you know taking advantage of the month of Ramadan and really focusing on uh, taking advantage advantage of the month of Ramadan. Um, uh, you know that those are all of the sponsors' announcements and updates that I have for you as of right now. Be the ta'ala. And I think that went a little bit longer than uh, that I intended, but it is what it is. So we're going to stick with that. Be the ta'ala. So getting on to the uh, you know the, the month of Ramadan and the top seven tips that I have for you to to to, 
to fully take advantage of the month of Ramadan is, um, you know, and, and I, for me personally, I'm trying to find the balance between being raw and spontaneous and, you know, being fully planned and prepared and giving you uh, the bullet points with all of its details and, you know, scientific and artistic uh, backing and uh, all of these uh, other things that, that, that um, you know, would be amazing to do, but at the same time, you know, trying to find the balance between uh, uh, quality and quantity or quantity and quality, or however you want to look at it. Um, so all that saying, uh, you know, getting on to the first one, um, and th they're not in any particular order. Honestly, you could start in any particular location. Um, even though some of them will come before the other, so you could, you know, uh, prioritize it however you like. Uh, but the first one that I have down is act like uh, this Ramadan is your last Ramadan, right? Um, and this is something that I've picked up from a loved one of mine uh, that listened to uh, one of the scholars that was just saying that, you know, act like this is your last Ramadan, you know, and, you know, if you actually knew this was your last Ramadan, how would you act? How would you behave? How much would you desire? How much would you exert yourself to make that a reality? How much would you, uh, you know, what, what would you do if you knew this was your last Ramadan? How would you take it? How, if you knew this was your last Ramadan, how would you take advantage of it? So, um, you know, having that frame, mind, uh, uh, frame of mindset uh, has really, really helped me take really a uh, good advantage of the the first 10 days of Ramadan so far alhamdulillah rabbil alamin and i'm so thankful uh, that my loved one shared that with me uh, because uh, you know I, i'm i already have that mindset kind of embedded in me so to have that you know reminder uh, was really really beneficial for me bidhnillah ta'ala and you know the truth of the matter is we might get Another opportunity uh, at, you know, multiple Ramadans, or only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how many of that we actually have left. Or this could be, in fact, our last Ramadan. So we have to perceive and approach it in that manner, bi'idhnillah ta'ala, so we can take as much advantage of it as possible, bi'idhnillah. Um, you know, the next one is to have the right intentions and sincerity. And this is a monster one. Um, having the right intentions and sincerity, you know, we, we all know of that uh, well-known hadith of our beloved uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, saying that all actions are but by intention and every person should, uh, is going to be rewarded according to their intention. So, you know, setting the right intention, uh, having that right intention is going to be crucial. Um, and this is a hadith narrated by Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. Um, and I believe it was in the 40 hadith, uh, and I believe it is the first hadith within the 40 hadith uh, of, of Nawawi. Um, so you can read the details of that there. Uh, but, you know, being intentional with what you're doing and having that sincerity um, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is crucial. Um, and this is a battle that I have within myself constantly, daily. Uh, because, you know, I want to do things for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't want to do things because I'm competing with anybody else um, or because I want to, you know, uh, um, you know, have somebody be pleased with me, have somebody, uh, you know, prove somebody wrong or whatever other things that it may be. Uh, I want to do it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's like a double-edged sword. Uh, because, you know, the shaitan has mastered uh, making us uh, using our intentions and sincerity against us. For example, saying things like, uh, you know, when you want to do something right, uh, you, 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 you tell yourself or you justify not doing it because you don't want to please somebody else. Right. Uh, like making it to Fajr on time or, you know, other Salah on time. You're like. You know, I'm not going to make it. It's a, it's a really dumb counterintuitive reason for not doing it, even though it is a double edged sword that we have to balance, you know, never not do something because you are afraid of doing it for somebody else, you know, uh, do it and, you know, have the intention that you're doing it for the, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hold yourself firm in that intention and sincerity 
and don't let the fact that you might be doing it to please other people stop you from actually doing that thing. Um, and this is a, a tip that I picked up from uh, Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawzi. Uh, 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 may Allah have mercy on him. So, you know, having that intention and sincerity will take you a long way. Um, you know, by having, you know, real intentions to do something, uh, without even having to do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla wa ala will reward you for it accordingly. Um, and, you know, that's a real beautiful, strong belief of a Muslim uh, that knowing that just by having the intention, genuine intention for something, that you would already be getting the reward for it. And when you do it, you'll be, a, you'll be getting even more reward for it. So that's the power of intention and sincerity, um, you know, and I've, and I've battled with it and I continuously battle with it every single day. Um, and, you know, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to be sincere uh, with, with the purest of intentions and utmost sincerity uh, for his pleasure, ya Rabbal, uh, for his pleasure, ameen. I was about to say, ya Rabbal alameen, like, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us that. Uh, you know, the intentions and sincerity of, you know, taking full advantage of uh, the month of Ramadan, bi um, the, ta'ala. The third tip that I have for you is take care of your salah. Uh, take care of your salah. Um, so, uh, some of the most important things that you could do is first and foremost, take care of your obligatory salah. Uh, before you focus on the extra credit, Take care of the main things that if you do it, you'll get rewarded for it. If you don't do it, you'll get punished for it. Um, so your, your five daily prayers is what I'm talking about. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, and Isha. Uh, really, really focus on taking care of those and being uh, fully present and uh, obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and engaged with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as possible. And take care of your sunnah, salah, you know, before and after the obligatory prayers. And last but not least, or the last few things is take care of your tarawih. Um, this is an extraordinarily important salah. Um, and I'm growing fond of it as I grow. Because when you're younger, you don't really understand the benefits of it. Um, and you're just really focused on you're so tired and so many other things. But when you understand that this is, a, uh, this is uh, something that really improves your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it even stronger, um, you know, you, you'll be able to take uh, advantage of it. Uh, praying your witr uh, either right after your um, uh, right after your tarawih or your qiyamul layl or tahajjud uh, is going to be very, very important. And last but not least, you know, try to do as many Qiyamul Layl or Tahajjud as you possibly can. Um, and, you know, if you can do it, all of it, great. But if it's overwhelming, stick with the basics in the order that I just mentioned it right now, uh, because those are the particular ways that you can utilize to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I believe there's a hadith... Um, saying that, or it could be a hadith al-Qudsi, if I'm not mistaken, saying that, you know, the obligatory prayer, the obligatory deeds are the ones that you can get closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, and after that are the uh, extra credit uh, deeds, right? So focus on the obligatory ones, because if you do them, uh, you will get rewarded for it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if you don't do them, you will get punished for it. And then focus on the extra credit, uh, the supplicatory prayers, uh, supplemental deeds, I should say. Um, whereas if you do it, you'll get rewarded for it. If you don't do it, you won't get punished for it. Um, so, you know, do it in that, in that aspect of it is going to be very, very helpful. Um, the other one is read uh, Quran and Sunnah as much as possible. Now... Um, you know, we, we all have different relationships to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. 
either publicly or privately or in between, whatever that may be. Um, you know, it, it, to, to whatever capacity you know of the Qur'an, read it as much as possible. And to whatever capacity you don't know, listen to it as much as possible. Or uh, if you're, even if you know the whole Qur'an, but you know, you're in a tight situation schedule-wise, listening to it is going to be very, very beneficial and soul, heart and soul soothing. Uh, ta'ala. So, you know, and, and, and the month of Ramadan is the month that we should be taking advantage of Quran, of the Quran as much as possible, um, whatever capacity that means for you. And if you are memorizing it, um, that's even better. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who memorize the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, reading Quran and Sunnah as much as possible. Um, you know, it's the, the primary focus is, is the Qur'an. Um, and then, you know, all of the sunnah that you're going to read, tailor it to the month of Ramadan. See how our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took advantage of the month of Ramadan as well as his sahaba and the tabi'een and the atba tabi'een and the righteous predecessors uh, that came after. Um, so, you know... Doing that is going to be uh, very, very helpful as the fourth tip. Uh, the fifth tip, well, that was actually the... Oh, so that was the fourth tip. And then the fifth tip is take care of your sadaqah and zakatul fitr. Um, now, the month of Ramadan is the time when deeds are multiplied by multiple folds and bad deeds are multiplied uh, by multiple folds as well. But... You know, focusing on the positivity, um, it, it's important for us to, you know, give as much sadaqah as we possibly can, be the nilai ta'ala. And there's not an obligation to give sadaqah is uh, extra credit. But zakatul fitr is a part of sadaqah, it's something that you give in the form of food. Um, and that's what the scholars have advised us to do is, you know, usually we've been told to give money. Uh, but it's much, much better to give it in the, in, in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger told us to give it, which is um, to, to, to give it in, in terms of food, right? To the needy, uh, ta'ala, so that they may be able to uh, ta'ala, or we may be able to take advantage of that as well, ta'ala. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of benefits in giving sadaqah. Um, you know, with some of which is, you know, it, it erases your, your bad deeds and sins and transgressions and things like that. Um, generally, from what I'm aware of, it prevents uh, negative things that were coming your way uh, from happening by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and so many other things that you can think about. It makes you feel good and whole inside. You know, you know the more you give, the more you contribute, the better everything becomes. Uh, for the most part, um, and, and granted that you're putting yourself first and foremost and you t you're taking care of yourself because at that point you're giving it grudge and guilt-free. Um, so doing it in that manner is going to be very, very crucial. Um, and within that is giving your annual zakah. Uh, once you've met the nisab and it's been a year um, after that, now you don't have to, actually you cannot wait for the month of Ramadan to give it. You have to give it your, your, your annual zakah when it's due. So um, that's one of the mistakes that a lot of people made that Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed me to understand that um, I have to pay zakah when it's due, not when uh, I feel like it or when I think I'm going to get or when, I, when, when there's an opportunity to get more reward. So um, that's a key thing in terms of giving sadaqah and zakat al-fitr, as well as your annual zakah, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. And that's tip number five. Um, and some of us are a lot tighter on our money than most because, you know, our income level is a lot less or we have bigger goals and dreams that uh, we're looking to accomplish. But the more you part ways with your money in a, in a, in a good way, uh, not in a frivolous, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, wasting way, but in an intentional, sincere way, uh, the better the quality and quantity of your life becomes. Uh, because this is, bi ta'ala, a means of gaining closeness to 
in achieving the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as all the other uh, you know, four tips that I've mentioned so far including all of the other tips that we are going to mention in Allah ta'ala um, and number six is to purify your heart and soul um, this is very very crucial to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness um, you know because uh, the, 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 this is the month where uh, get, getting um, forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very very important um, uh, asking other people to forgive you uh, is is very very important as well. So asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the Creator, to forgive you. Um, uh, asking the creation to forgive you, and uh, forgiving uh, the creation as well, um, and forgiving yourself for the grudges that you may have hold you may have held towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala or His creations. Um, you know, because we're all having you know, different seasons of our lives, you know, different stages, different levels and different seasons of our lives. Um, and, you know, we, we might not be in a good, good situation spiritually and psychologically. So at that point, we tend to hold on to grudges. Um, and, you know, it's a constant battle uh, to, 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 to ask for forgiveness and to forgive others or to forgive others and to ask for forgiveness and not in a, a condescending or demeaning way, but in a, a sincere and humble way, you know. Um, and, you know, de depending on what you need and want the most, um, you know, it's, it's good to, you know, constantly make sure that you forgive others and purifying your heart and soul as much as you can, as hard as it could be. Uh, but it is just as important, if not more important, uh, to... Ask other to ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and His creation for forgiveness, um, and it's important to start with forgiveness because uh, you're freeing yourself from the uh, emotional baggage and the bondage of grudges, harboring and holding grudges. Um, and you know, honestly, uh, the the more I lose focus on my deen, the more I harbor ill feelings towards others. The more I focus on my deen, the more I'm more forgiving. And, and in turn, hopefully, other pe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His creations, uh, creations forgive me as well, be in Allah ta'ala. And forgiving yourself as well, you know, it's, it's crucial. Sometimes we might be beating ourselves up about uh, some things that we've done in the past. I know I'm constantly struggling with uh, things that has happened in my childhood and past um, that I'm slowly but surely trying to forgive myself over. Um, some things were beyond my control, some things that... Um, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us that we might have done intentionally. Um, so, you know, it, it's a good month to really, really focus on purifying yourself. And, you know, sometimes you tell people the truth and they don't like it. Um, and for that reason, they cut relations with you. Um, and, you know, that happens to me. Uh, and, you know, it hurts. I'm not going to lie. But at the same time, uh, mo you know, if they really understood the intentions behind telling them the truth, um, in hindsight, uh, they might appreciate it more. But if they don't understand it, you know, so be it. But at the same time, you know, continuously try to reach out to them, continuously, um, you know, try to keep that line of communication open. Um, and, you know, always give them the benefit of the doubt, uh, directly or indirectly, one way or the other. Uh, give them the, be the benefit of the doubt and uh, keep working at it and, you know, see how you guys can uh, mend those relationships, right, uh, uh, in both directions, right? Um, so, uh, you know, purifying your heart and soul is, is crucial because, you know, anybody who's harboring grudges, anybody who's harboring uh, ill feelings, emotional baggages, whatever you want to call it, trauma, um, the, you know, it, 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 it is not going to achieve uh, at least sufficient and everlasting success and happiness 
in life, not only in this dunya, but more importantly in the akhirah, because uh, those things are weighing, weighing on you and weighing you down. So, um, you know, that's something that, uh, that that's a major challenge for me, um, because, you know, I, I've, I've allowed uh, a lot of individuals in my life to continuously cross my boundaries, to continuously uh, um, take advantage of me in ways that I thought was genuine, but in hindsight, I found out, you know, they had some some of their own intentions that they were using me for. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all gravy, and you know, vice versa. I know I've intentionally or unintentionally hurt people. Um, and you know, there's a lot to overcome. There's a lot to overcome. And if you're not willing to forgive, uh, yourself and others, um, how do you expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and others to forgive you? So, you know, for me, even though it hurts, even though I go through the pain, even though I do that, I, I still keep that door of forgiveness wide open uh, because I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the creation to forgive me. So I start by forgiving myself and others in hopes that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his creation forgive me as well. So um, I know a lot of us uh, are good at doing that. And I know a lot of us are uh, really, really bad at uh, purifying our hearts and souls and forgiving um, you know, ourselves and others and asking uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and others to forgive us uh, because of our ego and everything else that kind of goes along with that. Uh, but at the end of the day, it is something that uh, obviously you can see by how much time I'm taking to express that, uh, which is something that has been constantly on my mind that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to achieve that, which is one of the most important things, um, especially one of the one of the best and most beautiful du'a that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised Aisha radiallahu anha as well as all of us to do is, I uh, hope I'm going to say it correctly and I remember it correctly. Allahumma inna ka'afoon kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. Which is basically saying, Oh Allah, Allahumma inna ka'afoon kareemun. And you love forgiveness, kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Uh, that you love to forgive and forgive me. And that's a broken down way of explaining it. But, um, you know, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness uh, constantly and making that dua uh, is going to be very, very important. Um, so that's number six is to purify your heart and soul. Um, and last but not least, and I'm not sure if I have anything bonus for you, uh, but I will leave you with some final thoughts, bi-idhanillahi uh, ta'ala. Last but not least is build good habits during Ramadan that you're going to continue after Ramadan, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala, because that is a sign of if your Ramadan has been accepted or not, is when you can personally uh, start new uh, good habits or build on the ones that you've already had and continue that after the month of Ramadan, that's how you know that your Ramadan has been accepted. And what a fortunate, uh, opportuni opportunistic time uh, to build good deeds, to, pil to, to build good habits, I should say, um, than the month of Ramadan. Uh, you know, one of the things that I think about during the month of Ramadan is that it is the sanctuary of the pious and righteous. Um, and even the sinners and transgressors, right? Um, this is a wonderful opportunity to uh, correct our ways, to gain internal healing uh, within our hearts and souls, minds and guts, um, and everything else that the internal world is encompassed with, or the internal world encompasses. But, you know, we all have bad deeds, whether it's doing this doing that or you know whatever it may be we all know what our bad deeds are um, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to break free from our bad deeds and start good ones during the month of Ramadan and keep it uh, throughout the year and hopefully for the rest of our lives until we meet our Lord um, so building good habits is really really important and that's something that 
um, uh, I had the intention of coming into the month of Ramadan with, um, and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen has been going uh, really, 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 really well so far, even though I have a lot more improvement to make. Uh, but, you know, I'm happy with the progress so far in the first 10 days. Hopefully I can double and triple down in the, in the next um, uh, 10 days and triple down and quadruple down in the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan so I can keep those good habits moving on. And that's what you should do as well, ta'ala. whatever your bad habits are. Replace them with good habits and continue on from there, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. Um, final thoughts. Those are the top seven habits, just to kind of review it. Uh, number one, act as if this is your last Ramadan. Number two, um, have the right intentions and sincerity. Number three, take, your, take care of your salah. Number four, read as much Qur'an and Sunnah as you possibly can and listen to it as much as you possibly can. And number five, take care of your sadaqah, zakat al-fitr, and annual zakat bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. Uh, number six is to purify your heart and soul. And number seven, last but not least, build good habits bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. So I hope that this was very, very beneficial for you. Um, and I'm happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allowing me to get back to creating content um, and, you know, learning about all of these, uh, you know, proactive as well as reactive, pre-recorded and live um, content uh, that, that we're all in the process of creating. Um, you know, and I, I know I didn't talk much about business, but, you know, working should, should take secondary uh, pri priority. Uh, you know, taking advantage advantage of Ramadan should be priority. Uh, you know, whether it's your business, other us, other aspects of your finances and life, uh, or not. Either way, um, it's going to be very very crucial for us to be able to do so. Um, and um, let's see. You know, I think that's pretty much it. Honestly, you know, I'm trying to improve on creating better content. Uh, so uh, let me know what you guys would like for me to focus on for you, uh, what's, what's beneficial for you in the realm of business, uh, finances, or life, um, not only in this dunya, but more importantly in the akhirah, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, let me know what you guys would like for me to cover. I'll do the research for you. I love researching, uh, studying, and all of that jazz. Um, but let me know what I could do to help, uh, you know, to, to maximize your business, uh, finances, and life. Uh, um, so hit me up, inshallah. Uh, just to quickly, uh, before I give you the final, final thoughts um, uh, on, on taking advantage of Ramadan, um, I really just wanted to quickly recap uh, the sponsors' announcements and updates. Our primary sponsor is Ridwanullah.com. Check us out. Um, if you would like to sponsor this show, uh, send your request, budget, and details to RidwanullahOrganization at gmail.com. Um, and also, uh, you know, obviously I've mentioned a couple of things. Um, you know, we're, we're refocusing on the Ridwanullah show in a pre-recorded way. Um, and we'll try to see how we can incorporate uh, more uh, live sessions and things like that as we go along. But at the very least, the standards and expectation is that you would get at least uh, one Ridwan, the, one of the Ridwanullah shows uh, per week, and you know we're we're gonna have to different we're gonna have to figure out how to have different uh, focus points. But you know the main show is going to be focused on business, finances, and life. Be the ta'ala, and we're gonna have other shows that we're gonna be focused on. Um, uh, you know. One of the seven or a couple of the other seven uh, uh, desired outcomes and results of life be the Nilai Ta'ala. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm really focused on uh, doing one on one coachings. So if you're interested in uh, doing one on one coaching uh, to help you maximize your business, finances, and life, um, uh, let me know either one on one or with your team. Um, that's what I'm going to be focused on, and that's actually the reason why, as of right now, 
Um, I've stopped doing uh, the Redwanullah University programs, uh, whether it's the business maximization program, financial maximization program, or uh, the life maximization program, bi ta'ala. Um, so, uh, you know, those are part of the announcements and updates that I wanted to let you guys know. Um, any constructive feedback that you guys have for me, please let me know. Um, I enjoy connecting with you guys and interacting with you guys. Uh, let me know what you guys have benefited from, uh, what I can improve on, uh, and we'll keep that going for you. This has been one long, long journey, uh, many ups and downs, um, a lot of thoughts of giving up, but uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed me to push through. Um, and, you know, I, I love doing this show and I have uh, an outstanding dream and vision for this show, um, as well as my business, uh, finances, and all other parts of my life in this dunya and in the akhirah for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I hope that you guys can join me on this journey. Um, I guess in a couple of other updates as I'm looking into the uh, transportation industry uh, that I've been looking into for a very long time. Maybe this is my my uh, my way of making up for you know not talking about business and finances as much as I would like to. Um, but I'm looking really into the tr uh, transportation industry. A lot of my uh, family and friends and, and acquaintances are within the transportation industry. Um, so that might might become my main source of income as I continue to build a Radwanullah uh, company and orga an organization overall, uh, companies and organization overall. Um, and, um, you know, th there's a lot of goals and dreams that I have in business. Um, you know, the, I, I think, you know, a lot of things are stopping me from starting, but I'm learning about them and trying to rewire them uh, in the proper way and not let anybody pressure me to getting started when I uh, when I don't think um, and I know there's a over a way to overthink it but I feel like as of right now that I have other priorities that will actually help me in business that I'm focused on especially during the, this month of Ramadan and a lot of them honestly is really uh, uh, the seven tips that I gave you um, and amongst the tip that I forgot which is within the Salah is Start your day, at the very least, if not tahajjud, with uh, fajr. Uh, starting off with that is going to be very, very important. Um, but uh, also, if you would like to be interviewed or at least have a conversation on the Ridwanullah show, um, hit me up. And if it's not you, if it's somebody that you know, let me know who that person is and we'll connect with them that way um, and build on from there. Be the ta'ala. Um, other than that, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really excited for what the future holds in business, uh, finances and life, um, in this dunya and in the akhirah for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so that's what we're going to do, bithinillah ta'ala. And that's pretty much it. Um, jazakumullah khair, uh, Radwanullah family, uh, I'm your host. Hussein Mahmoud of the Ridwanullah show, uh, checking out by saying, uh, never ever give up on completely maximizing your business, finances, and life in this dunya and in the akhirah for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs>